So uh, I reason with a lot of people, especially elders, Rastafari elders. And I always struggle with like why, and I understand the time in which he lived, but I could never put my finger on Mar why Marcus Garvey was a practitioner of Christianity. Hmm. Okay, so as far as my understanding of it, uh, he came up Catholic, right? Um, there's, there's multiple different views on that thing, but primarily the, I focus on the usage of the Christianity, right? Not so much his practices slash beliefs though, right? But the way he used it. So one of his famous quotes is that religion strikes to the heart of the Negro and the Negro is more spiritual than anything else. So knowing this and knowing the majority of specifically black Americans were black Christians, um, I think he was able to use that as a tool for recruitment. The majority of Liberty Hall, the way we picture what a Liberty Hall is, were here in what we would consider the West, um, which was already a Christian mindset, um, even in, in Jamaica. Um, so I think it was a tool that he was using to get people. I'm not sure if you've ever read the rites and rituals or the, or the catechism, but you know, it's all like Christian prayers and uh, uh, hymns and things like that. But they also incorporate um, the term Allah in there a couple of times too. And, and, you know, refer to Muhammad several times. So, you know, one thing, uh, again, Okay, so we're gonna go off on a little bit of a tangent here. So one thing that I usually I usually like to talk about with Garveyism and religion is again the fact that we don't have to have no divisions amongst us is the example of Leonard P. Howe being a Garveyite and being one of the first Rastas, uh, El Eliza Kade, who was a Voodoo priest from Haiti, um, who was a Garveyite who was sent to the Pan first Pan African Congress. Um, along with I.D.B. Wells and uh, A. Philip Randolph, but those two couldn't go. So Eliza Kade went. Um, the rabbi that created our anthem and most of those things that we're talking about, Rabbi Josiah Ford, uh, 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 McGuire, Alexander McGuire, who was the, uh, the chaplain general, who was a Christian. Um, Dusay Ali Muhammad, who was a Rasta, I mean, not Rasta, who was a Muslim from, from Europe, right? Muslim scholar. You know, all of these people were Garveyites at one time, at one time under this flag. So we have the example of the fact that we don't even need to, to have a division amongst us based on religion. Um, so I believe it was a tool, uh, is the short answer, the tool that he used to recruit. Herbert Harrison? Hubert Harrison. Hubert Harrison. Can you please uh, share a little bit about him? Then I'll let you go. This is the Liberty League, right? Um, so, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go too far into him. I will say that I remember having a discussion one time about him uh, accusing Garvey of stealing his legacy or his his ideas, and I believe that I'm not sure that anybody was going to be able to do what Garvey ended up doing at his level. It had, it had somehow it just had to be him. Uh, I do not want to get into the controversy too too deep. I'm probably not going to answer this the way you want to, but you know, again, everything is chess. Life life is chess, right? So you have to use the tools that you can use, and Garvey did it most successfully. And again, to answer the question you said before, yes, Garveyism is the solution for our people because Garveyism is black nationalism. And unification is the must. Yeah, because I've 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 read a lot about Harrison, and uh, um, it just seems a vibe where it's a building block in a sense, and he didn't have the charisma and skill level to how would you say to do what Garvey did in a sense. I think that's the source of it, you know, because we all adopt stuff from people. Right, we're all pirates to a certain extent, so we can't really say someone fully uh, pirated particular ideas 
I like using the word inspiration, but it's what you do with it. And I believe that. Um, and the book I was reading, it said Harrison really wasn't a people person. He was kind of a hole in a sense. And he didn't yeah. have that charisma that Garvey had. And um, he also but, ended up becoming a UNIA member, too. Yeah. He was writing for the paper for art. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's like, you know, if you were really going to do it, you could have still did it. Go ahead. It was, like, that time. it was a lot of switch. Then he he he, he had an issue with him. He joined. Then he had an issue with, with him again, right? Then he like kind of towards the end, right? The boys yeah, As boys. a matter of fact, our second assistant president general has a has an awesome discussion about him, and and uh, just basically certain certain negative things that the brother did, underhanded stuff that you know, um, that helped help the situation with getting Garvey deported, et cetera. So. You know, again, like I said, I ain't trying to go into no nothing too deep on that, you know, race first. Well, let me hear you say my own thing.